Okay, good morning, afternoon, and a warm welcome to you all to the soft launch of the database on the national implementation measures for the PwC. My name is Maria, Maria Garza Maceda. I'm an associate researcher at the WMD program at UNIDIR, and I'm very happy to be able to moderate this event today. I should note at the outset that this event is being recorded and that it will be made available online in our website in the coming days. Today, we are proud to announce a new tool that will soon be added to UNIDIR's Digital Hub and will be put at the disposal of states and other stakeholders. This is the PwC National Implementation Measures Database. This database is currently being developed. And as we will explain later on, we plan to launch it later this year. But during this event, we are going to introduce the tool to you all and showcase its main structure and functions through images of the test website. With your indulgence, we are showing some names of countries as examples on the screen for illustrative purposes only while blurring the data that we are in the process of collecting and validating. We want to give you an idea of what is to come and gather your input as we develop this new database. To provide a little bit of context for this project, we know the biological weapons regime is a priority research area for UNIDIR. The WMD program has produced several publications and events on key topics, of the PwC and the team will continue to support state's work in the recently established working group during the intersessional process and also beyond that. Work in this area is particularly important against the backdrop of escalating geostrategic tension and the rapid advance and diffusion of biotechnology. In this context, we think it is important to take concrete steps to make sure that international and national systems are able to manage the challenge of dual use biology without stifling the exploitation of biotechnology for peaceful purposes. One element of this is the adoption of national legislation and policies that are designed to effectively implement the convention. It is with this in mind that we are pleased to be working on the BWC National Implementation Measures Database with the overall objective of contributing to strengthening the implementation of the convention. This is a significant multi-year project, which we are tackling in partnership with Vertic, with whom we have been collaborating closely in the project, and along with technical support from the UN International Computing Center. All of our colleagues join us on screen today. And we would like to thank all of our partners for the work on this project. We are also grateful to the government of the United States of America for providing funding for this project. We will now move into the presentation of the database. So we will start with a brief introduction. Then we're going to explore the different aspects of the database, discuss the methodology that we use, the feedback, feedback sorry, mechanisms that are available and the way forward for this project. We will then move on to the Q&A section, but please do submit your comments and questions at any time during this event through the Q&A function that you can find on the bottom of your screens. These questions and comments will be treated as anonymous and will be visible only to the panelists. So if you wish to be attributed, please also type in your name and country or institution. So I will hand over the floor to my colleagues for the presentation. First, I would like to introduce Sonia Drobis. She's the co-program director for national implementation at Vertic, um, where she oversees the development and implementation of global projects on the legislative implementation of obligations arising from international instruments for the non-proliferation of CBRN weapons and the security of related materials. Sonia holds a PhD in international law from the University of Paris I, 
pantheons of Bonn and has published widely on issues related to treaty implementation. And I would like also to introduce my colleague, James Revel. He's the head of the WMD and space security programs at UNIDIR. And his research interests focus on the evolution of regimes dealing with weapons of mass destruction, where he has been published widely. And he holds a PhD focused on the evolution of the Biological Weapons Convention from the University of Bradford in the UK. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Jamie, to start with the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. Good morning, afternoon or evening, colleagues, and welcome to this event. Uh, what follows from, from our side will be a little bit of a duet with Sonia in which we'll swap back and forth on some of these issues. But if I can perhaps begin by really talking about what, what is this? Uh, what is the database? So to provide a little bit of context, the BWC National Implementation Measures Database is a searchable, publicly accessible, publicly accessible database containing information about national implementation measures. And here I'm talking very broadly about national implementation uh, that have been undertaken by all states parties to the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention. Really what we're trying to do is to bring together laws, regulations and other measures on this on this topic that have been implemented or in the process of implementation, put them in one place as a sort of one stop shop for BWC implementation measures. Perhaps if I could have the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about the purpose. So in doing this, we're really underlying here is the idea of strengthening the implementation of the BWC. Uh, and building what's been done and allowing stakeholders to better understand different approaches to national implementation from around the world. So in many ways, it serves as a tool for building confidence and, and having more informed participation by relevant stakeholders in the policy processes and, and promoting trust, transparency and cooperation related to the BWC. It's also perhaps worth noting what this is not. So the database is not intended as a verification or compliance assessment tool nor are we undertaking an evaluation of BWC implementation through some sort of scoring or ranking system of implementation. I think that's really important to be very clear from the outset. That's not what we're trying to do here. But we do think it's useful to take stock of what has been done around the world and provide a resource for those perhaps that are seeking to develop their own measures or advance the BWC implementation. Uh, in terms of the target audiences, so the database is first and foremost intended as a useful tool for BWC states parties, um, but also for signatories potentially who might be in the process of reviewing the implementation of the BWC as they move closer to ratification, uh, as well as others that might want to update or develop their legislative regulatory or implementation measures. It's also meant to be inform non-governmental organizations to reach researchers and international organizations as well who may be interested in learning more about approaches to BWC implementation, um, broadly understood, which we'll touch upon further. But with that, I'll hand over now to Sonia. Um, please, the screen's yours. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Jamie. Good morning, good afternoon to all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so I'm very pleased to be introducing the BWC National Implementation Database today. And I will now introduce the team who is developing it. So as you can see on the slide, the project is undertaken through a partnership between Vertic and UNIDIR, and also the United Nations International Computing Center, also known as UNICC, who provides technical support for the development of the online database. So UNIDIR first, as you know, has been at the forefront of developing digital tools that support states' efforts in their implementation of policies in different disarmament and international security regimes. In 2019, UNIDIR launched the cyber, security, the cyber policy portal, and more recently, the soft launched the artificial intelligence policy portal and the space security portal. For this project, UNIDIR serves as the primary point of contact for information related to the National Implementation Measures Database and is involved in the database and survey design, data collection and analysis and help desk tasks. Turning to Vertic. So for those who don't know us, Vertic is a nonprofit organization based in London. We work on the verification, national implementation of, and compliance with international instruments, with a focus on instruments for the non-proliferation of chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons, 
and the security of related materials. The National Implementation Measures team, who is working on the development of the database, is a team of multilingual legal experts. We have been working with states as well as international and regional partners for a number of years on the national implementation of the Biological Weapons Convention, along with other international instruments. We provide legal support to analyze and draft PwC implementing legislation. We also develop tools to do so and regularly produce publications on related topics. One of our tools has been our own BWC legislation database, which has been used over the years to inform research, analysis, and assistance on BWC implementation. We are delighted now to be part of the team with UNIDIR and UNICC to develop a more advanced and expanded version. The Versa team is involved in the database and survey design, data collection, and analysis. Turning to UNICC, so the UN International Computing Center has over 52 years of experience as the largest strategic partners for digital solutions within the UN system. UNICC designs and deploys transformational digital tools and programs to support over 90 clients and partner organizations in fulfilling their mandates and supporting the sustainable development goals. UNICC is endorsed in the Joint Inspection Unit reports on managing cloud computing services and cybersecurity with distinct recommendations for UN agencies to consider UNICC for its solutions. Within the context of this project, UNICC is providing web design, software development, cloud infrastructure, and cybersecurity services to support the development and ongoing maintenance of the National Implementation Measures Database System. I will now hand over to Jamie so we can explore the database together. Hey, thanks, Sonia. Uh, so just, just to provide a little bit more detail on the database and start with the homepage, this is essentially what the homepage will look like. And this should be familiar to those of you who have used the cyber policy portal that Sonia referred to earlier. But essentially, we have an interactive map, um, as well as a number of links to further information related to the database. And this includes things like a contact form, as well as an additional resources section. Just a note on the additional resources section, we're also trying to develop a glossary of some of the key terms that we use in the database. And I should point out, be very clear, this is developed solely for the purposes of the database, so we can kind of bound and show what we're doing. Uh, if I could have, click through, uh, if you see, if you hover on one of the countries um, with the mouse, you'll be able to see country information, and then you can click to enter that state country, uh, that state profile. Also on the homepage, a couple of other things to note. Uh, we do have functionality here to provide a list of states and so you can click on that and then select a state's party you're choosing and there is also a filter function so if you want to look at a particular topic a particular category uh, then the filter function allows you to visualize on the map some of these the, the implementation of some of these measures by country uh, we'll also have additional filters as well for geographical regions and bwc groups in order to be able to provide an overlay there as well so moving to country profiles, I'm using Panama here purely for illustrative purposes, and then throughout the presentation, we'll occasionally draw from other countries, but just to illustrate what we're trying to do. Uh, the, the profiles will have a sort of standardized approach to doing this with the first section, which will summarize the country profile. And then uh, below that in the website, we'll be able to find detailed information on a number of different categories of national implementation of the Biological Weapons Convention. So this includes things like prohibition, ex uh, prohibitions, export and transfer controls, biosafety and biosecurity, oversight of life science dual use research, and then details around things like government organization for administering and enforcing the BWC. And of course, at the end as well, last but no means least, we also have information on BWC art assistance and cooperation office, uh, office as elaborated under Article 10 of the BWC, which is something which is important for many states. I'm not going to go into detail with all these categories, but I'll hopefully guide you through this with a couple more examples. So if we have a look at how one category looks like, if we take the prohibitions, for example, 
As you can see here, we have a little information button um, next to the prohibitions title, which gives you the, the sort of definition from the glossary that we're using to explain what we're trying to, what we're looking at here and how we've bounded that as well. And then uh, for each of these sections, we'll have a short summary. Uh, and indeed, this is a short factual paragraph, which is really summarizing the information that we have. Then if you move further along and the slides, we have a couple of other options here. So for details in each category, when you click this, uh, again, we're using illustrative examples of countries here, but you can see uh, some of the details of both what has been done in relation to the categories we've identified, but also the locations so of the source of that information, where it shows our working in some ways and shows where we've got the, the where the, this uh, particular element of the database resides. So for example, if the country has included a definition of BW, you would display it there. Using the another illustrative example of biosafety and biosecurity, uh, you can also see how in the database we identify the different statuses of different subcategories. So here on the right hand side in the box highlighted uh, circle, the red rectangle, you can see we have yes, there, which indicates there is evidence of laws, regulations or other measures on this topic. We have in progress, uh, which suggests there is evidence that legislation on the topic has been presented to the appropriate legislative body and is therefore in progress. We also have unable to find, which means that maybe references to the topic have been identified, but we can't find any evidence to support this. And then finally, the category of no, in which we use in circumstances where there is no evidence of laws, regulations or other related measures. Uh, another feature of the country profiles, which I want to point out as well, is that you can click on the resource tab and this um, displays the documents and the relevant links to the material that we have collected. These documents are primarily going to be things like laws, resolutions, regulations. Um, again, and we've tried to display this. So if you follow up on the click, you can see, and this takes the case of, of Japan. Uh, again, using these cases purely for illustrative purposes, you can see we have the, these measures in different languages as well, and then it should take you to that relevant piece of, of supporting information. Those of you that are familiar with the Cyber Policy Portal and the other tools that we're in the process of developing should be fairly familiar with the, the way we've done this in the past, so it's basically trying to provide that repository of information and documents. Um, <clears throat> To close the presentation of country profiles, a couple of different functionalities I wanted to draw your attention to. The first is that we include a section on suggest an update. Uh, this is in case you're browsing and find something which is perhaps out of date, please do let us know uh, and make any suggestions. As part of the research process, we will continue to scan for updates, but we also welcome input from states parties and we'll talk a little bit more about this in due course. The second thing I wanted to draw your attention to is that we also have the ability to export country profiles as a PDF file as well, so the material can be downloaded. Moving on to a third or another feature which I want to talk through, this is the comparison tool. And it allows users to look at different approaches and tools to BWC implementation. And more specifically, you can view up to five countries in a side-by-side -side profiles. And the following few slides, I'll, I'll walk you through how this would work, taking two countries as, as an example. So first of all, if you click on the Add button on the right of your screen, you have a drop-down menu from which you can select uh, the states you want to look at. And if you scroll down, you can see, first of all, we start off with a sort of comparison of the general points for each of the countries. But then moving further down, there'll be additional details that can be addressed as well. And we'll also be able to display some of these details of the categories side by side. So if you can see in the comparison there, oh, sorry, there's a summary bit there of how the summaries would compare for, uh, for example, the category of prohibitions between Sweden and Japan, again, used just for illustrative purposes. And then going a little bit further down, you can see how we'll be able to present some of the details uh, and the information which has been collected on this topic in a side by side manner including the resources that have been collected. Uh, and as you can see here, sorry, we're going through these quite quickly, but you can actually go through and access the relevant documents by selecting the tab from each country. Okay. As with a single country comparison as well, we'll also have the option of being able to export the comparison data as a PDF as well. Uh, one final thing before I hand over to Sonia to talk about a couple of other things is the issue of the, the feature of the search functionality. So this is designed to enable a search of the database, but also the documents contained within. Uh, we have the image here, it's, it's a 
representative tool and this is still under development, but the idea being that you can search within the content of country profiles, you can search within the text for particular buzzword, particular search terms or particular words that you're looking for within the PDFs as well. And with that, I'm going to hand over now to Sonia to cover some of the multilingual features, the methods, um, and a couple of other things as well. So the screen is yours, Sonia. Thank you, James. Uh, yes, so one of the features that uh, we also wanted to present is the multilingual uh, character of the database. So as you can see on the slide, the website will be multilingual, available in all UN languages. Uh, we are first working on the English version, which will be launched first. Then the others' uh, languages will follow, including Arabic, Chinese, uh, French, Spanish, and Russian. So the content will be translated and made available over time. Another feature we wanted to present uh, is to note that the database will be available not only online, uh, as desktop version, but also uh, you will be able to consult it from your mobile phone. Turning to the methodology that we have been developing uh, to work uh, and um, develop the BWC National Implementation Database. So first of all, uh, the team who is working on the project from Unidir Vertic uh, is a team of multilingual researchers, so we can collect, review, and translate data in multiple languages. Second, we have established a clear data collection protocol process to ensure clarity and consistency at all stages of the data collection process from identifying which researcher is working on which country uh, to update the information after a profile has been completed. To collect data and compile the information found, we have developed what we call a survey template which reflects the category that uh, James has already mentioned, such as prohibitions, export and transfer controls, and biosafety and biosecurity. When collecting data, we focus primarily on publicly available official sources from state parties, such as official gazettes or governmental websites. We also implement an internal cross reviews of the completed profiles. But in addition to this cross review, we want to provide an opportunity to each state to review their information through outreach over email and online or in person, if possible, meetings. We will make every effort to reach out through different means to engage with states and work with states to make sure this is an accurate reflection of the status of BWC national implementation. Further to this, uh, we generally encourage any users of the database to provide feedback on the database and its content. But this can be done, um, at, as I've just said, when the Unidir and Vertic team conduct outreach to states representatives, I've just explained. There will also be a suggest an update functionality in the country profile or contact page on the website. And a contact email, which you can see on this slide, has also been created. Turning to uh, the way forward, uh, so we've given uh, an overview of um, what the database will look like and what we have been working on. So we have been working on this project since last year. And this has included to date project management activities for the initiation and first stages of the project recruiting project dedicated staff who are all present today, but also database design activities with our colleagues from UNICC. We officially started developing the database in January this year. Subsequently, we have been working on the design and refinement of the data collection protocol and the data collection survey, which I was just uh, referring to, with data collection on internal pilot cases. We have also started initial outreach and exchanges with states on uh, this project and the development of country profiles. Now, part of the reason for this event today specifically is to reach out to you and engage. Uh, Unidir and Vertic teams are undertaking a systematic process of collecting data on state measures as pointed out 
But again, uh, we want to reiterate that we also want to work on this collaboratively with states and we will be in touch with representatives of all BWC states parties. Next step uh, for the projects include the live launch event, which will be held at the working group meeting uh, in August this year. The database will be in beta testing mode with a small sample of countries from all three regional groups. We are then planning to host a side event on the margins of the BWC meetings of states parties in December. Next, we aim to complete the database by the end of 2024, incorporating about six to eight country profiles per month across regional groups. After that, the team will work on updating each state profile to keep the database updated and up to date. We currently have funding to do all of this until 2026, but we will plan on how to sustain the project beyond that date. And with that, I will hand over to Maria. Thank you very much, Sonia, and thank you very much, Jamie, for that overview of the database. And we hope it served you as a good um, overlook of what is to come. So now we are really keen on hearing your point of view and answering any questions the audience might have. So please submit your questions or comments through the Q&A function, as I said before. Um, I noticed some of the questions that were posed uh, were already answered in the course of the presentation, but we are happy to address those again and in more detail. Um, so we do have limited time for the Q&A, but I'll try to get to many questions as possible, and if not, we can also finish a little bit earlier. But Jamie, if I could start with a question that perhaps you can give us a little bit more of insight on about the details of the methodology the team is using to collect and collect the data for the database. Um, I'll hand over to you and then Sonia, if you want to add anything else, you're welcome to. Yeah, thank <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Thank you, Maria. I, I, indeed, I, that was a kind of something we spent quite a lot of time thinking through, and I think Sonia's already covered some of the protocols for the data collection. But one thing I'd really like to kind of emphasize is the importance of trying to make this as far as possible a cooperative, collaborative process of working with states to make sure that we have an accurate and fair reflection of states' parties' activities in relation to national implementation. So we will obviously kick off and we will do the research to try and dig through to see what we can find. But then we, we it's, and there is, a, as Sonia detailed earlier, there's the protocol for doing that, which involves using a wide range of primarily looking through official sources for the collection of data. Uh, and we have quite a structured systematic survey approach to doing that, which is taking quite a while to, to put together with the team in Vertic as well. But I do think it's worth emphasizing that I think the data collection process fundamentally it is it helps considerably if we can make it a collaborative cooperative process of working with states to refine the findings to make sure that they're accurate and continuing that process of cooperation to make sure the materials we have are up to date um, and continue to reflect the situation because uh, we do realize that these things do change over time um, certainly following the history of this over the last couple of decades, there have been a number of updates um, to, to BWC implementing legislation and indeed a sort of expansion of different areas. So I think what, what we're trying to do here is at least have a range of quite a broad range of implementation measures that we can go through and look in a systematic way with a view to, as I said earlier, sort of that, that idea of, of helping others develop national legislation, having the transparency and building confidence in the implementation of the BWC. I'll stop there, uh, but thank you very much, Maria. Thank you, Jamie. There is a particular question um, in the Q&A section, and perhaps, Sonia, you can give us a little bit more insight on that. Uh, it, are BWC national contact points involved in any stage of the process of data collection or data validation? Uh, we touched upon this, but perhaps you could clarify. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Murray, and, and thank you for this question. Uh, yes, yeah, so in line with what uh, James was just saying, uh, we will aim to reach out to the BWC National Cold Tank Point uh, throughout the process uh, to uh, share the country profiles that we develop um, and discuss the information that we have found and, if um, appropriate, consolidate the country profiles and, and the um, all the, the measures that we have identified in consultation with the BWC National Contact Point. So yes, in short. Thank you. And perhaps you can also, Sonia, give us a little bit more insight on some of the questions that are popping up uh, regarding the survey we're using and the data structure details that we went through really quickly. Yes, of course. Um, so yeah, as mentioned earlier, we have developed uh, what we call an internal survey template, uh, which we populate uh, with the data that we collect. Um, and we have briefly gone through some of the categories uh, that are covered by the survey during this presentation, but I'm, I'm happy to expand, uh, Marie, as you asked. So the first category, uh, as James was mentioning earlier, is uh, prohibitions. Uh, so in other terms, measures to establish criminal offenses and penalties for activities prohibited under the BWC. So those includes, uh, we start with looking at whether there are definitions uh, in national laws, regulations, and other measures for biological and toxin weapons. And then we look at prohibitions on the development, possession, import, export, transfer, use of biological and toxin weapons. We also look at participatory offenses, uh, such as assisting in uh, committing any of those offenses. We look at measures to establish territorial and personal jurisdictions um, and measures for the seizure and destruction of the material linked uh, to the offenses. Now, the second category that we look at uh, that we also covered briefly during this presentation uh, is export and transfer controls. So in other words, measures to regulate international and domestic transfer of materials, equipment, and knowledge related to biological weapons. But more specifically, uh, we look, for example, at licensing measures for transfers, including import, export, transit, transport, measures for end user controls, security and accountability requirements for transfers, uh, and lists of control items. Now, the third category that we look at, as again was alluded to during the presentation, is measures for biosafety and biosecurity, uh, including, for example, uh, whether there are any lists of high-risk biological agents and toxins that will be subject to strict controls. Then we look at uh, things like registration requirements for individuals or facilities, authorities to conduct inspections, specific biosecurity and biosafety requirements, measures for personnel, uh, such as uh, conducting background checks for personnel working uh, in facilities handling biological agents and toxins. We also look at cybersecurity measures um, and guidelines or codes of conduct for scientists. And as a follow-up to this, um, the fourth category that we explore is uh, we look more specifically at measures for the oversight of life sciences um, and dual use research, both at the institutional and governmental levels. The fifth category uh, focuses, as James was saying earlier, on governmental organization for administering and enforcing BWC implementation. So we look at which uh, authority or authorities, uh, plural, are involved and have uh, functions related to BWC implementation. And the last categories include uh, things like BWC working papers, so whether uh, working papers have been submitted to BWC meetings, uh, national reports submitted um, under UN Security Council Resolution 1540, BWC confidence building measures, and uh, last but not least, assistance and cooperation offers submitted to the Article 10 uh, database. So this gives a bit more uh, details on the categories and the kind of measures that we look at. Thank you, Sonia. I see there is a kind of a follow-up question also in the Q&A regarding a particular aspect. Um, what, 
specifically whether it, it makes mention of biological weapons, they ask us, for example, with regards to provisions, prohibition, sorry, of use. Do we also include provisions addressing the spreading of disease, even if this is restricted to spreading animals um, or humans? And if you do, uh, if we do, do we mention such restrictions in the country profile? Can you perhaps give a little bit more of um, detail on, on those aspects? And perhaps, Jamie, if you want to contribute as well, you're welcome to. Thanks, Mayor. Perhaps if I can also follow up on an earlier point around national contact points as well. I, I think national contact points were publicly available and, and actually published in the ISU background documentation until around 2014, I think, or something like that. Uh, but they're no longer publicly available and we're not going to share details of specific individual contact points. So please do rest assured we're not going to contribute to the potential spamming of your, of your inboxes. But I do think it's useful to look at where these sorts of positions are located in relation to different aspects of government departments and indeed trying to build an understanding of how different states approach the, the implementation of the BWC because I've always been struck there's often quite a degree of variance in who leads and who does what in this area. So at least trying to make sense of that struck us as interesting. Uh, there's a couple of other things, if I may, Maria, just to respond to. I think that the question on spreading of disease, even if this is uh, and links to animal and plant as well, we, we would certainly want to include that as well. So we're not just focusing purely on measures or legislation, we're not just searching for legislation which explicitly refers to the BWC, we'll go wider than that and try to find measures which get into those topics of kind of the, the prohibition of uh, around um, the deliberate spreading of diseases, including in cases where this affects animals and plants as well as humans, because I think it's important we don't lose sight of the various different targets for, for biological weapons. Um, I think that's it for those questions, Maria. So I'll hand back to you, but I'm happy to take further questions as we move forward. So Ned, do you want to provide any insights on that last point as well? Uh, yeah, just, just perhaps to, um, to follow up and, and link this um, to the, the the idea that we want um, the database also to be a collaborative uh, tool. I think um, this is also the kind of question when or if we have some questions or doubts about the interpretation of a legal provision, uh, we will aim to discuss it with the country. Uh, so we may come up with questions like, is this a specific provision on the spread of the disease viewed in the national legislation as a potential BWU use? Uh, so this, these are the things that we would also aim to perhaps clarify uh, when liaising with the countries. Perfect. Thank you so much. I am noticing that in the Q&A, there are some questions that relate to how um, the database can be used, uh, if can be useful for different stakeholders and the different kind of uses they can have and, and um, how the database uh, and the information on the database can be actionable. Um, there are some mentioning clear synergies with um, between this resource and assistance um, or potentially Article 10, so international cooperation. Um, and there's also um, the mention of being used as a resource for countries engaging in voluntary peer review exercises. So all of this, how can all of this information and how can this database be useful for different stakeholders? And what are the interaction, possible interactions that you see can be useful for stakeholders? Perhaps Jamie, if I could start um, with you and then I'll hand over to you, Sonia, for your thoughts on this. Thank you, Maria. I mean, we, we, we certainly hope that the database is useful and can actually be feed into direct sort of ac action um, afterwards as well. I, I think that's perhaps something for us to consider in the future, but I think in the first instance, it's actually useful to bring all this material together. Then I could see a number of potential utilities of the database in the future. So as you mentioned, assistance, I mean, those states seeking to build their national implementation, seeking to, I, I don't know, build uh, mechanisms to be better govern dual use life sciences or develop codes of conduct education initiatives or biosafety, biosecurity measures, or get into work around international cooperation. I think there are a number of areas there where this collecting all this information can really 
provide a useful sort of mapping exercise for others to build upon. I think in terms of the specific roles for, for Unidia, and I, I, I won't even speak for, for Vertic, and Sonia can speak for, for um, Vertic, I, I think we're probably getting a little bit ahead of ourselves at this point to see how this could be used, but I could certainly envisage a number of exciting potential roles that it could play. Really underlying all of those roles is efforts to strengthen the Biological Weapons Convention and, and build better systems for the governance of dual use life sciences as a point where they really are expanding and advancing rapidly. So I'll stop there, but thanks, Maria. Thank you. Sonia, do you want to, to jump in here? Uh, yeah, just to second what uh, James was saying, um, I think from our perspective at Vertex, so we have been working uh, with states uh, over a number of years to um, help them strengthen their BWC implementing legislation. And we do believe that a tool like the BWC National Implementation Database can be very helpful uh, for us, but for the states uh, who are willing to strengthen their BWC National Implementing Measures. Uh, from our perspective, that would focus on primary and secondary uh, legislation, laws, regulations, uh, but hopefully this collaboration that we will have with the country as well in developing the country profiles and discussing the information um, that, that will be available on the database uh, will be very helpful to um, inform those efforts to strengthen legislation, uh, but also to see uh, and draw from um, experiences from other countries uh, for any country that may be interested in, in knowing uh, what's being done somewhere else in the country with a similar legal system or uh, similar activities in the field of bioscience, uh, that may be very helpful um, in, in this context as well. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I see there's a very practical question also about um, the functionality that we mentioned about exporting to PDF the country profiles and the comparison, I, uh, and if it would be possible to export in other formats as well, like in XML. Um, I can quickly uh, address this. So at the moment, we, um, we have only the PDF uh, option available, but this is certainly um, a comment and an insight that we can take into consideration uh, for the future of the database, maybe. Um, there is another question, Sonia, that perhaps you could start addressing on if we could provide a little bit more of context and insights into what the glossary is and what its um, purpose is in the context of this database. Could you address this? Uh, yeah, so we developed the glossary as a tool to um, make sure that um, both from our end and the user it will be clear what we are talking about uh, with the various categories uh, that will be um, th that will structure uh, the country profiles in the database, uh, but also key terms or frequently uh, used terms. So we have developed this uh, glossary, which will be uh, quite uh, easy to go through, um, where we have defined some key terms solely for the purpose of the database. Uh, so the definitions may, um, may vary if you look at other tools or publications, but for the purpose of the database, uh, it will be clear what we mean. Uh, so the various categories that I was referring to earlier, for example, prohibitions, biosafety and biosecurity, will be defined in the glossary. So we'll be make sure that uh, we're clear on what we mean by prohibitions or biosafety, biosecurity, for example, uh, as well as some other terms uh, such as export, jurisdiction, uh, risk assessment, uh, and so on. So it will be easy to go back to the glossary if in doubt about the specific meaning of a specific term or a category. Thank you, Sonia. And, and just to add very briefly to that, both the contents of the database and the glossary are living documents. So nothing is set on stone and, and we'll probably modify them as we learn more in the process of setting up the database and collecting data. Um, there's, I encourage you all to, to please continue uh, raising questions. Um, there is one but that perhaps, Jamie, I can put to you about the future of the database. It was mentioned uh, we have funded until 2026, 
And then how are we planning to sustain or future proof the database? Um, could you address this? You're muted. Thanks, Maria. Uh, yeah, so as you say, it's it's a, a sort of living exercise and it will continue to evolve. And just to come back to a point raised earlier, at present we're focused on PDF as a means to export the, the data. But again, things like that, we, we can consider changes in future releases moving forward. Indeed, it seems fairly clear that just as laws, regulatory measures uh, evolve and need to be updated in this field, in some cases quite quite quickly at the moment, so too will the research tools. So we, we are aware of that. At the same time, though, we have actually spent quite a lot of time trying to make sure that we, as far as possible, do future-proof the, the database in our thinking around this. So that includes things like making sure we have a broad approach to, uh, to to looking at national implementation and including things like uh, Article 10, as well as things which are perhaps new or novel. So we uh, touch upon one, one of the categories that we have is cyber biosecurity measures, which may be a new thing for many people. But I also think that's an area which is becoming increasingly important and takes a number of different forms. So seeing what's in place there could be useful. And again, coming back to the earlier point of how can you make this actionable? I think having this, this sort of data in place and being able to go through this mapping process, I think, could be really useful in building a better understanding of, of things like cyber biosecurity, but also those more traditional tools, seeing where we are and seeing sort of taking stock and looking perhaps at some of the lessons learned from these different areas as well. Thanks. I'll stop there. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, Sonia, is there anything you would like to add to this? Yeah, I think perhaps echoing what I was uh, referring to earlier uh, when it comes to our work on uh, legislative implementation and working with states uh, to strengthen and support processes to strengthen national legislations for the BWC. Uh, this is also a sustainability thing. It goes both ways. I think as we will be working with um, countries uh, to develop and work on their um, legislation. Uh, we will also mention, of course, the database, refer to it and be able to update uh, the, the information on the database that we may get from the countries during our, our engagement with them uh, to work on BWC implementing legislation. So it's, it's also a way to make sure we keep things uh, up to date. Thank you very much. Uh, Jamie, there's a quick question also on the chat that perhaps you can clarify about uh, if this database is going to be publicly available or uh, to whom it's going to be available. Can you expand a little bit more on that? Yeah, that's pr pretty straightforward. I mean, the database will be publicly available to any interested party, so it'll be a public website and people can come and join, and it'll be based on publicly available data. It's just what we're doing is bringing this all together and taking a systematic approach to going through uh, BWC states parties and to look at how they've done this, what is in place. So there is nothing secret. I think it's quite important that we're, we're quite transparent about this there's, there's no we're not trying to trap or trick states so we do want it to be a collaborative cooperative process of working with you to make sure that what we have reflects the situation in country and i think that collaborative process is really important what happens after that i think will obviously depend on, on what states want to do in many ways what states think would be useful to do on the basis of having all this data uh, but that's a, a different conversation for a different time um, not not for now uh, but I mean, just just if I may, I really would encourage those to, those of you uh, will will reach out to you in due course. But uh, yeah, please do get in touch as well if you have questions or you have further things you'd like to raise. I'm always happy to discuss this, and I think many of you, if not all of you, can can find my email address or get in touch, and I'm happy to to discuss this further. I'll stop there, Maria. But thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie. Um, so it seems we have gone through all of the questions in the q and I'm going to encourage you if you have any pending questions to put it on the Q&A um, function at the bottom of your screens. But in the meantime, um, Sonia, is there any final remarks on your side that you would like to make before we close? Why well, I hope everyone uh, found this uh, event useful in learning a bit more about uh, what's coming up. Uh, from our side, we're again very pleased and very excited to be working on this database uh, with UNIDIR and UNICC. Uh, and we very much look forward to engaging with states and other stakeholders 
uh, to make sure this is a, a comprehensive product and, and one that is up to date and, and helpful in strengthening PwC national implementation. Thank you so much, Sonia. Jamie, any final thoughts on your side? I know you just uh, said it, but if you want to reiterate anything. Yeah, we just say thank you all those of you that joined. Um, as I say, we are available and are happy to discuss this further. I, I'm generally not sure British uh, the British convey excitement very well, but this is me really quite excited about this project. I think it's really challenging, but it's also really interesting. And I think it could be really helpful in helping to take forward the BWC. So I hope others can, can share that and we can continue to, to discuss and, and move this forward collectively. And I'll stop there, but thanks very much, Maria. Absolutely. I can echo that we uh, at the Unidu team and also Vertex side, we are all very excited to be working on this project. But um, so before we close, I would like to encourage you to explore our resources, which you can find, sorry, through the links in the chat. Um, and if I could also encourage you to fill our online feedback form, it only takes a couple of minutes, it's anonymous, and it will help us improve our events moving forward. Um, and the database. So there's a link in the chat or you can scan the QR code on your screen. Um, in closing, I would like to thank all of the Unidu donors who support our research and convening activities. And in particular, this BWC database projects has been generously funded by the State Department of the United States of America. I would also like to thank my colleague Shizuka Kuramitsu, uh, who supported the production of this event, and also thank you all for attending. I would like to stress that the BWC database, as all our other Unity portals, really rely on the involvement of you, the national delegates and experts, to support our teams in best reflecting your country's policies and legislation. So we need your involvement to make sure that data is accurate and complete and that the tool serves your needs. So we very much welcome your feedback about the country profiles, but also the website in general, um, as Sonia and Jamie mentioned before. So I'm certain this will grow to be a very useful resource on your toolbox, whether you're a state party, an NGO, an international organization representative, or a researcher. Uh, may I remind you that after the event, you can reach our database team through the email that you can find on the screen and the chat. So do get in touch if you have ideas or suggestions for our work. And with that, with that I will um, hope that you have a good day or a good night, depending where this finds you online. And thank you for coming once again. <laughs>